Hey guys, welcome back to the Reserve Team Podcast. We've got a special episode on just the transfer window today. I think it'll be a pretty cool one. This is episode 23, uh, Michael Jordan episode, I guess. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, let's go, baby. Gets it back. Messi! Did it again! Balotelli, Aguero! Overhead kick! Oh my word! That's amazing! And Dempsey's denied again, and Donovan has scored! Oh, can you believe this? Go, go, USA! Yeah, um, once again, this episode is going to be sponsored by Ultima. Um, Ultima Replenisher, Max has got a cup, Alex has got a cup, I've got my cup, cheers to that. Um, and we'll, and uh, we appreciate all their, their uh, support that they've given us, and uh, we'll get into the episode. Um, so, with the transfer window just closing, um, Let's let's just give our give our thoughts about what's going on here. I think we'll start with the probably the biggest transfer in in recent days. Um, Max is already smirking up there. <laughs> uh, Ronaldo, the, sn- the Ronaldo snake going himself. home. The snake himself, right, Max? Hold on, let me yeah. clarify. I said if he goes, he's a snake. I didn't call him a snake. I said if he goes, he's a snake, and he didn't. Thank God. There's a text message that might say that you said he was a snake. Show me that text message. I'm not yeah, going that's, my phone. <laughs> that's what I thought. Um, no, but obviously, gas that he signed for us because we were already we were title contenders. But you would probably say that Chelsea and City and maybe arguably Liverpool were ahead of us. But now with Ronaldo, you can you'll you can definitely say like we're contending for the top spot in the prem. And even looking at Champions League now, like people are probably writing off United, say no, like they're not really Champions League contenders. But like we have literally Mr. Champions League himself, like the king of Champions League. And I think that, that even boosts our chance in the Champions League. What? What's so funny? Alex is smirk about something. <laughs> United's not winning the Champions League. I didn't say they were. I just said I said he gives us a much higher chance of going far and maybe, maybe winning the Champions League. I didn't say I think we're I think we're not favorites, but we're much better contenders than we were prior to him joining, obviously. I mean, adding Ronaldo can't hurt, right? So, no, like, it, it can't at all, especially with now we have Cavani coming off the bench for him, who Ronaldo will get the number seven, thank God. <laughs> and but with Cavani off the bench, we have like a lot more depth, which which kind of hurt us compared to like Liverpool, City well, not really Liverpool, but City and kind of Chelsea. But yeah, I'm. I'm excited. I said United was going to win the league, and this this is um, a really good stepping stone in that. So, uh, I was going to say, as soon as he signed, I my first thought was, okay, I think either of the uh, Manchester's Manchester clubs are winning the Prem this season. I think if we were to redo our predictions, I I actually don't know who I would have at number one. I think still City, United, and Chelsea. I would probably just switch those two, but. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. I think it's just more of the fact that he's actually coming back to the Prem, at least for me, being not a United fan, and that he'll be coming to, you know, I mean, we're going to see him more on TV and whatnot. So I'm just more excited to see him play more often. So, yeah, it is exciting, but at the same time, it's terrifying because I'm sure he's going to go to the Emirates and kill us. So, I mean, who doesn't at this point? Right. (laughs) <laughs> um, do you think there was any validity to to the Man City talks now that he's said, "Oh, I'm I'm a Manchester United guy for life." Blah blah blah. He's come out and said that he's he's always loved the club. He's he's going to be you know faithful or whatever. Do you think there were validity? There was any validity to those city talks? I think with his with his agent, yeah. I don't know about with. I, I it's weird because like why would Ronaldo's agent go to City knowing Ronaldo's statue at United? It was probably because the I think it was because City were the only club bidding for Ronaldo because PSG came out and said we're not interested in Ronaldo, and he wanted out of Juve, but no clubs were interested. And I think See, once any I, club any club sparks interest, his manager was like, "All right, let's get going." So I feel like the funny thing is with Ronaldo though, or with the situation, like <laughs> you can't say to um, Juve that you want to leave. Like, okay, I'm done. I feel like without someone already, without already talking to someone. So I definitely feel like City was talking to I think his name is uh, Jorge Mendez. I'm probably butchering it in Portuguese, but uh, his agent, I'm pretty sure. And I just think that 
when he was at Juve, like telling them, hey, I want to dip. I think then like he definitely knew he, where he was going or he might have had a clue. So I think that could be the only validity there. But then when Ronaldo thinks about, okay, I'm a United legend, from legend, and literally what United represents, like, he couldn't. <laughs> that's his career, like, he couldn't. Him. That's, that's – and in, in it, too, like, even on his Instagram post, he said, P.S. Sir Alex, this was for you. And, like, and like apparently a bunch of, like, past United players were texting him trying to, like, uh, swim to come in. Bruno, think- Bruno was also apparently, like, he – in it too, like calling him and stuff. So I think Ferdinand talked to him as well before. So, so he had probably had a bunch of influence. Going like when on. you think of when you think of Ronaldo returning to the Prem, there's only one club that comes to mind. Like it's United. It's not always oh, going. And if it, and if anybody, he's definitely not going to Man City. So or like a Liverpool. So like it. Yeah. I don't know. It's just exciting that it's happening. It is. It is. Exciting um, from just a general fan fanship, and then from uh, from your your and I's point of view, Alex. So it's a little scary when you're <laughs> you got to go like, up against Ronaldo. Like it'll be so yeah. cool to yeah. see him, even against Arsenal. I think and right. like, obviously you with Luster, but all right. Moving on to uh, another another big name returning back to a club that they had formerly left. Um, Griezmann <laughs> back to Atletico. Um, Alex, you're shaking your head. What what does that mean? Just like he should have just stayed deal. there in the first place. Barca signed Griezmann from Atleti for 120 mil. That deal fund, that deal funds Atleti signing of Jao Felix and accelerates Barca's financial crisis, which leads to Luis Suarez joining Atleti for a nominal fee. So Suarez fires Atleti to to win the league, and Barca forced to offload offload Griezmann back to Atleti. Like, I think just that just kind of shows like. Just like the poor, poor management, Barca's kind of been through this past few years. Because like, what is? And, and it's right because Suarez left, and look at Atleti, and like, look at the state of Atleti, and look at the state of Barca. Like, yeah, Barca's kind of like, um, in a, in a, yeah, yeah, exactly. But what's what's it called? Re, rebuild, retool. Yeah, rebuild. Yeah, rebuilding phase, and like. It's just I don't know the the move I thought was good for Atleti obviously because Griezmann I mean, wasn't performing as we all expected he was going to at Barca but like I remember Matthew Matthew sent us something about maybe Jao Felix was going to be in that move and I think Barca should have done something of that sort even if Atleti came out and said he wasn't like he was untouchable like they should have maybe gotten someone in return or something like that but See, but I don't think they can afford someone even if they put a price tag on a loan yeah. Yeah, probably. You know, players lowering their their wages just so they can register players like Aguero. Like I, they, they sold and they sold another. They're one of their youngsters to RB Leipzig, one of their good center mids. Like they're literally just an Emerson. We have on the list as well. He got he's got Tottenham after the president himself said, "Oh, he's going to be here for multiple years or whatever." He barely stayed a month, I think. Yeah, yeah. Like they they need to offload these players, and I just don't think. I don't know. Well, but then they go and sign Luke De Jong, and I can't remember the price at the top of my head, but I'm sure it's that Coleman Netherlands connection. It's like the culmination of all of Barcelona's poor moves have just like come to fruition in the last couple months. And they, you've seen, you know, obviously Messi out, um, now Griezmann, and just a bunch of like, like kind of what Alex said is offloading salaries. And I think they just were like, Oh well, we'll kick the can down the road, and we'll worry about that when it gets here. And oh, we'll just add this piece, and and when we have to, then we'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, now they're figuring it out, and now they're just going in the opposite direction, and yeah. and they look like a like a club club in distress, and and it's not the Barcelona that we grew up knowing and and kind of you know watching. Um, and I they they they're almost unrecognizable at this point. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going back it's, to what Matt you go. No, I was just going to say, looking at the nature of the team now and looking at it like, what, five years ago, let's say, or something like that, it's actually, like, crazy what ha- what's happened in those five years. And especially now because, like, players, like, I think PK, Jordi Alba, and Busquets all took wage cuts so that Aguero was um, – could eligible. play. Yeah, yeah, was eligible to play, and now he is. So, which is – which is weird because they just signed the or the young who's a striker. But anyway, <laughs> like 
I don't know. It's just, it just, I think this whole situation kind of shows like the state of what Barcelona, or like what Barcelona is going through. Yeah. And I think going back to Max's point that he said, oh, let, it helps Atletico, but like it's a good move for Atletico. It's also a good, good move for Griezmann. I mean, he, he's had, he had a very good Atletico career. So I'm sure yeah. you know, strike forces now, Felix, obviously Suarez. Carrera. Uh, yeah. Like all, they're going to figure out some way to fit him in. I mean, they're going to. It's, and he's going to perform well for them. He just fits in their system. I mean, he proved that time and time out. He just had that dream of going to Barca, which hasn't really panned out for him. But I could see this. I can honestly see him doing well at Letico and then, like, at Letico just saying, welcome back. We'll buy you. That's honestly probably what Barca's hoping, to be honest. Just take as much cash as I can. <laughs> yeah. It's just a weird, like, I don't know. Just, like, a weird – I didn't expect it. I just don't see Griezmann getting loaned out. If, like – of, like someone of Griezmann's, like I don't know, he's like a really, yeah, yeah. He's a huge player. Like I don't expect him to get loaned. Was, but, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're Barcelona, there's no point in keeping cargo on the sinking ship, right? You might as well get rid of it all. Yeah, yeah true. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah. weird because I thought I kind of thought they would like maybe fit him in with the pie Aguero, like some of these new signings. But what do I know? Need money. Right, yeah, I was going to say, it's a, it's a business at the end of the day. <laughs> that it is. Go All right, so their, what? I said go into their competitor. Yeah, their competitor. Real Barcelona. Madrid 09, do you want to you wanna <laughs> take this one away? Uh, sure. Uh, Kamavinga, very – one of the best youngsters in the world, was a Warren's player, now Real Madrid, center mid, French international. Uh, he's wanted by – Many clubs. He grew up an Arsenal fan. Fun fact: I was hoping he'd come to the Emirates, but uh, hope maybe he'd get relegated with us. But uh, I honestly didn't expect him to move this summer. It kind of just seemed too late. And what this deal got done, it's now the first. So this deal got done, honestly, two or three days ago, right? Yeah, it was. It was. It was, it was pretty quick, it was, and it was twenty-five, thirty mil, I think, some maybe around that range. Mm-hmm. So it was a. I mean, it's a good deal for both parties. He wanted. He was gonna leave eventually. Like I, I think he wanted summer. to leave this summer. I think like he came out and said like I want to. I want to leave. Yeah, and I think at his dream club also was Madrid. So, I mean, it's just good for every party involved. Yeah. So he's gonna do well. I don't know how quickly he'll if they're gonna throw him in. If Ancelotti will throw him in, like quickly. Like I mean, you still got the likes of Modric, Casemiro, Cruz. But Val, Valverde, yeah, Valverde, but he's in players yeah. in front of him, yeah, yeah just but, but you know, if some world class. If you're, looking into, if you're looking into like the future, like Valverde is very is young still, and Kamavinga is younger, like that would be such a good center, center mid core for the time to come. So, yeah, it's a really that's, good signing. That's a great partnership just for the future and also the present. Like, they're not, they're not, it's not like they're poor now and you have to develop them, right? I mean, yeah. you can, you can still let them develop behind, you know, the likes of Modric and, and Casemiro and those guys. So, I, mean, I think they're in a great situation. No, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I think I, I, like I was, I was telling you guys before this, I went in at United, but I think he fits really well with Real Madrid and, well, like what you just said, Matthew will obviously learn from all three, all those midfielders we just mentioned and and potentially be one of the uh, best midfielders here, like in the future. Yeah, I don't, I, I mean, in terms of a landing spot for him, I, could you ask for a much better spot? You go to your dream club. There's not too much pressure to perform yet because you, there's still plenty of guys in front of you. You get to learn from the best, but you're also going to get an opportunity to play in some matches. Like it seems like a pretty, pretty great right. fit landing spot for a young and then when you go with the national- Champions League football too right. which he's never had before so and then and then when you go off to the national team if you get called up you're going to learn from the likes of Conte Pogba blah blah so yeah you know he's in a pretty good situation I'd say I don't know about you <laughs> De- oh, decent at best yeah and then and Alex like- you want to you want to touch about, <laughs> about the right back situation at well, I'm happy. So I'm pretty happy that we low. I I wouldn't sell him, but I'm just gone. He's, I'm just glad he's gone for the summer or for the season. Um, Bellerin and Real Betis. So that actually made me smile as an Arsenal fan. It's been I had nothing to smile about recently, even with our signings. I mean, so we signed this the Japanese center back from. I can't break belong belong no belong no sure here we go the Serie A club uh center back he's 
he's young. I think he's 22, 23. Uh, our board is very, and obviously, if you can't tell, we spent the most, and, and it's all been in youngsters. They believe in um, getting – this was like part of the quote. I'm going to butcher it, but this was paraphrasing it. They said that they want to buy, like, the world's best youngsters and then, like, believe in Arteta's project, essentially. So, like, never really heard of this guy. Um, he's represented Japan at the Olympics as well. Like, Matthew's like, Matthew's like, what project is he talking about? Yeah, like, <laughs> like how, how, how much longer does Arteta get to work on this project? If like, he loses, is, if he loses to Norwich, I'm buying a plane no. to the Emirates, and I'm. But perfect. you just said that they they're giving him a leash for this project. Like a project to me is so, like multiple years, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I've accepted years. the fact eternally, like in, like internally, that I think he's going to be our manager for like a decent time. Just because it's weird to buy all these youngsters and like you have to let it kind of pan out. I feel like despite us being trash at the moment. Because if you bring a new guy in, then it's like, well, if he doesn't want those youngsters, then it's like, why did we waste? Why did we spend the most in the Premier League? Well, you know, it's like, okay, maybe if let Arteta develop this project with these guys <laughs> and let's see how they do, maybe okay, it'll but- turn out for the best. But at the moment, I understand like see, the trash. My thing is, my thing is with Arteta is like, or with Arsenal is like, I, I, I've, I've said this before on you. If he doesn't get three points, not a tie, three points in, against Norwich, he needs to go. And if I think Conte is obviously the favorite, well, a fan favorite for. He's not going to come. I know. I'm just, I said a fan favorite. That's why. But like, comes. here's my thing Would you have those young players be under Arteta who really hasn't shown what he's worth in the Prem or a proven manager in Conte and train those young players and see what he can do with them. But would Conte want to come into a situation no. where there's a bunch of young guys? Like you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to, to attract a, a world class manager to this project that Arteta started because it's just going to be a bunch of young guys that aren't going to be ready to compete at a high level for two three years. It, I mean, yeah, you're right. Cause in I I feel like Arsenal might like rely on like what kind of Chelsea did with like I don't know if like Henri would be an option, Alex. For manager, like, I, I or like, because like, because Matthew does make a really good point. Who wants to go to Arsenal? <laughs> my thing is, is like, if we, if I, we're kind of getting off the transfer talk, but if we, <laughs> if we were to get rid of Arteta, I like when the season we said for, we got Freddie as our coach. Like, I, I don't want that. I want like a proven manager, and I, like, I want Arteta to succeed. Succeed. I want him to. But just at the moment, or for a while now, it's just been trash. So I, I, I don't know. I honestly do believe he's gonna have like half of this season, just to see how like he's gonna incorporate these youngsters. Because Arsenal, we're also known for players getting injured a lot. So I don't know. I think that the how do you say his name, Matthew? The Tomohiro Tomiyasu. That was probably really good, actually. I think he'll actually get decent minutes whether it's in cup games or even in the prem i mean gabrielle's been injured for a minute he's pretty injured he's okay ben white covid like we got and then we just got players that aren't good enough so i think all these players honestly will be given an opportunity and it's just that's just and it's up to them to see how they perform (laughs) but then but then if you talk about like arteta's tactics and stuff like that's a whole different like at some point Somebody's got to take the shovel out of Arsenal's hands and they can't keep digging deeper. Like, somebody's just got to say, enough is enough. Mm-hmm. Like, I agree. It, and it's, I don't know. See, but getting rid of players and offloading players like Bellerin, like, we need to get rid of like Kolasinac. Like, yeah, like the fact I'm watching Kolasinac play in the Premier League in 2021 still against City. Incredible. Against City. Said in like Chambers and holding, it's like, like, I remember playing, watching those guys like four, like three, four years ago, <laughs> two, three years, whatever. It's just like, what the f- are we doing? <laughs> like, I hope this dude is well. Like, I watched a YouTube video on him. He seems good. <laughs> yeah, I never heard of him before, before the, uh, until they, I saw Fabrizio tweet something and I was like, who? Like and, Alex, and, Alex, and Alex saw a YouTube hype video, so we're good. So, so here we go. Arsenal here we winning go. the prem. He's gonna... yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, 
So somehow we always get sucked into raging about Arsenal. Um, but <laughs> let's let's move on here. We'll talk about the Mbappe situation. No transfer, lots of rumors. Um, Mbappe wants out, but he's stuck. He's staying. Um, Madrid put it, obviously clearly wanted him. They they put in a third bid of you know upwards of two hundred mil, which is insane. Um, but PSG just eh. We're all, we're good. We're good. They, so, they, we're, Matthew, what do you think of it? I mean, for me, like I understand it. PSG is in a tough spot because obviously you don't want to just like get rid of Mbappe, but is he ever going to be worth more than 200 mil? And if he wants to leave, like he's going to leave eventually. So like, and he's, his contract's done after the season, so he can be a free transfer. So like, he's not leaving free next year. So, so I, I mean, part of me, the business side of me was like, you had you got to ship him. The soccer side of me was like, I understand why you would keep him and try to win Champions League. Um, but yeah, it's a tough spot, and so I don't think. I mean, if they don't win Champions League, everyone's going to be like, "Oh, well, they should have sold Mbappe." But if they do, then they're going to look like geniuses. So it just kind of depends on how the season plays out. I think that was my that was my biggest thing. <laughs> I think Sorry. you said it. Right there. <laughs> I was going to say that was my biggest thing is if they do not win Champions League, like. I would consider them to, like, be failures, honestly. Like, they need to win Champions League with that lineup. And with him not accepting – actually, not even – yeah, well, not accepting, but not even, like, responding, not even – Entertain it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not even entertaining the 200 mil, the third offer that we would put in. Like, I don't know. It just shows how wealthy the club is, I guess, because they're like, yeah, we can just walk – we can just let Mbappe walk away next summer for free. It's It's no biggie, right? I, I mean, think they're really banking on that Champions League, winning the Champions League. Champions League silverware is worth more than 200 mil. Yeah. Well, PSG should win every cup they play for this season. Everything yeah. that, like, I don't even think it's, like, me being over, like, overdoing, like, over saying, like, they should literally win every I mean, I, mean <laughs> I feel like Lee Unin's just domestic cups, they've got in the bag. They <laughs> Top five greatest team ever assembled. It depends if they win everything. Are you saying without them even winning anything? Yeah, just yeah, like just, on, just, on just, paper. Just on paper. Yeah, it's gotta be. <laughs> it's gotta be. Now you, if you're gonna make me think about it, I, I think top five, like, Alex. Come top on. Five, you're thinking of all the teams that have won like troubles. No, you know, we got. No, so imagine you're there. looking at a paper and you read the top three. Okay, we got Neymar, we got Mbappe, and we got Messi. <laughs> I would be like, yeah, that's top five. I wouldn't even have to see the rest of the team. Top yeah. five, not five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then you go to your defense. Oh, we just signed Sergio Ramos. Oh, we have Marquinhos, you know. Donnarumma. Like Donnarumma, who just showed us how classy he is at the Euros. <laughs> like Hakimi, and then uh, they just signed that Portuguese left back, I think. Noon Menge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's actually how you say it. Shout out to my Portuguese, my Portuguese lads. <laughs> you know, um, you're watching from Portugal. Yeah. I, can't, I can't say Ronaldo's. I can't say Ronaldo's uh, agent, but I can say that. Yeah. But it's got to be a top five team for sure, hundred percent. That can be a debate. What is your hesitancy, Alex? What do you like? What What know. does you need? I, I, I'm not trying to disrespect the teams we've had in the past. <laughs> I'm not disrespecting. I'm just saying. I mean, you could go back to the, like Real Madrid team that won everything a couple of years ago. Okay, that's one team. That's one. <laughs> you could go back to Barcelona. Barcelona winning the triple. You can go to Inter winning the triple. Max, don't forget about your United team. I'm aware. <laughs> There's a lot of teams that we're just not going to – I mean, what did Bayern do the other season with Hansi Flick? Everything. Like, oh, I think that's five right there almost. <laughs> Arsenal, we just Arsenal, on paper. We just Arsenal, on paper. We just on paper. <laughs> Arsenal Invincibles. <laughs> uh, yeah they gotta be top five for sure i agree so speaking of after we just hyped up psg um our ultimate toast of the week i think we'll go to the team who we all agree that had the best transfer window psg most cheers. likely future champions league yeah, yeah, you, signed Me- you signed messi oh yeah sure yeah you signed messi you win <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, we send United, we win. Or we send United, we send Ronaldo. <laughs> nope, not how that works. 
So um, to kind of wrap up this this transfer talk um, special, we'll call it a special. I think it's a transfer talk special. Um, <laughs> um, do you guys have a team that you thought, besides PSG, that you thought um, had a great transfer window or on the flip side there, you know, one that was a little disappointing or one that you thought could do a little bit better? I can, I can take, I can start with this one. Um, besides PSG, I'm a little biased and I'm going to go United. Well, honestly, looking from, not even United, as a United standpoint, like we needed a right mid, we needed a center back. And then just to top it all off, we get Ronaldo. So like, I don't know. I think that in, in, in the center back and right mid, right mid that we got, we got us Varane, World Cup winner, champions, multiple Champions League winner. Then we have Sancho who has, proven himself to be one of the best players in the Bundesliga and then Ronaldo Ronaldo <laughs> I think outside of PSG that United would definitely be second in the best transfer window Alex yeah I, I, I said it yeah I said it before the video I think United probably if they didn't get Ronaldo like I, I don't know I'd have to maybe think about it a little longer but I just think maybe it's recent see bias I mean there's been so many signings no, you could honestly, you could even argue Chelsea too. That's what I'm I mean, saying. Lukaku, really... Saul. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of teams made some some power moves. This this transfer window was crazy. It was fun to watch. It was the best transfer window yet. Yep. So yeah. I I agree that United also had a fantastic transfer window. Um, selfishly, I'm really happy. I don't think they had the best, but I'm really happy with what Leicester did. Um. Mm -hmm. They added pieces for the first time in probably the history of the club. They didn't sell off a big a big piece. I was worried that a James Madison or a Yuri Tielemans would find themselves in a new kit, um, but I'm happy that everybody stayed and we and we added some pieces. No no big names, but I think pieces that could that could be good fits and what we needed. So selfishly, I'm very happy with what Lester did at the transfer window. I think another team I, we kind of touched them on that touched on them during our prediction video was a uh, Villa. I think Villa's made yeah. some really good signings, especially with the Jack Grealish money. So, I agree. Yeah, who could have done better? I'm trying to think. I, I don't know if they could have done better because what they had to do. But we've talked about Barcelona and how it's it's not that they could have done better, but it's just disappointing to see them just in a fire sale. Yeah, that's fair. If Holland yeah. and Mbappe would have gone this transfer window, that would yeah, be the fact that Messi and Ronaldo moved like right Ronaldo. that that alone that's is enough. Yeah, the and I was wrong too. I said Mbappe was going to move. I said it on the pod. I think that was like your first big, big swing and a miss, though. Yeah, so it was. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, if thank Alex would have said that Mbappe was going to move, then he would have stayed, vice versa. So we needed Alex to actually just say. I was going to say, I get things usually pretty wrong on here. So yeah, Arsenal was going to get like, relegated. <laughs> there we go. A little reverse <laughs> jinx. I love it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> On, on December, and we're going to be 20. <laughs> Poor Arsenal. Don't feel too bad for them, though. Well, maybe one team I hate sticking in the prem, but I think West Ham has made some really pretty good signings as well. Getting Areola, getting Vlasic from Chukka Moscow, and then they get this got Kurt Zuma. I think they signed another lad that I don't know of. I, I'm actually surprised they didn't go get Jesse Lingard, but yeah, um, like an actual transfer, but they're killing it this season, proving me wrong once again. But wait till your you wait till European competition gets going. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for episode twenty three of the Reserve Team Podcast. I hope you enjoyed our transfer talk special. Um, it was pretty fun to make. Um, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, comment down below, and uh, let the boys know what you want to talk about. Maybe we'll uh, talk about what's in the comments next time. True international break. Let us know. Yes, sir. Up the reserve team. Up the pod. Ultimate.